All right, guys, so let's kick it off. This is the uh, Real Estate Growth Academy Mastermind. I think we're on session eight, seven or eight of our 12 week uh, mastermind, guys. So um, as always, the purpose of this, you know, these masterminds are to discuss and share ideas, tips, strategies, just pretty much insight on what's working, you know, right now in the market. Um, all of us, you know, are kind of have different roles in the business. Some of us are in different areas. Um, so we just want to, you know, share that information and collaborate and help each other out. Um, as always guys, uh, you know, whatever you learn from these masterminds, all I ask is that you go out there and apply it to your business. Um, you know, we discuss a lot of ideas, but, you know, pick the one or two things that, you know, resonate with you, or you think you need at this moment and take some action. That's the main thing is, is you can go study and read every book and attend every seminar, but if you don't go back and actually put a plan in place, to make it happen, then you're not going to see those changes in your business. Um, the other thing is just, you know, pay it forward. You know, there's a lot of people out there struggling. There's just, you know, if you learn something good, pass it on to somebody else. You know, it's all about an abundance mindset. It's all about helping each other out. And I truly believe that the more you give, the more you receive. So uh, help that next guy out in your office, you know, who's struggling if you learn something good. So uh, we'll start off with that. Now, I want to kick it off just with uh, just kind of what I said right now about going back and taking some of this information and, and applying it towards your business. And I, I want to talk about a strategy uh, around that um, so that you can make kind of incremental growth in your business every year. And one of the things that has worked for us is just kind of setting up this quarterly rock system. Um, and it comes from, uh, I forgot where this theory comes from, but it, I think it's like uh, EOS, Entrepreneur Operating System. There's a whole uh, books that you can follow and read, but basically what it means is uh, you wanna chunk down kind of your year into quarters. And in those quarters, you wanna pick, you know, a couple of things that you're working on, a couple projects or systems that you're trying to implement into your business uh, and really just focus on those, laser focus on those for that quarter. Um, so for example, let's say, let's say uh, you don't have a, a solid buyer presentation. You know, this is a key one, right? Like every agent should have a solid buyer presentation, you know, a system of when they meet with the buyer, what do they do? How, you know, what email do they send beforehand? What's their script? Is there, a, is there an online presentation? Is there a folder, a book, a pamphlet, whatever you're going to do? And that's a whole system in its own um, so that every time you meet with someone, it's the same process. It's the same service, you know, and you can duplicate this and scale this once it's, once it's in place. But let's say you want to develop a buyer system, but then you also want to get a CRM and you also want to uh, make some new open house signs. And then you also need to get a, a tax preparer. Like it becomes overwhelming. Right. And what happens with most people is, is they bite off more than they can chew. They have a bunch of things on their list that they're trying to tackle at once. And unfortunately, you know, a lot of them don't end up getting done. Uh, things start becoming more priority. Things go to the back burner. And before you know it, you know, you look back several months and you didn't really get much done. All right. So the key thing with this rock system, guys, is to really just chunk down, you know, everything into quarters and then pick the one or two or three things that you're going to focus on for that quarter. So let's say, you know, getting your buyer presentation you know, and your system all set up is, is what you're working on this quarter. And maybe, uh, you know, working on your, your open house side, all your signage, all your marketing material or something that could be a project, right? Um, so you're, you're going to want to pick if you're just a solo agent, probably maybe two things, maybe three, depending on like how much time you have and how busy you are. But when you start adding like, more than two or three projects, like big projects on your list, it's, it becomes overwhelming. If you're trying to do it the right way, if you're trying to like really implement this thing at a high level. So uh, we recommend you do, you know, pick two things if you're a solo agent. Um, if you have a team or you have a partner, you know, you guys can each take on two things. And now you knocked out four things in that quarter. So the whole premise guys is that you focus on those two things for that quarter let's say you, you have two things you're working on, um, you're going to go through that quarter and you're just going to focus on them, you know, on the weekly, you're going to have check-ins, you're going to see where your progress is at. 
Um, maybe you have a check-in with yourself every week. If you're solo, maybe you have a check-in with your admin or your, your assistant. Um, if you have some sort of, you know, support and you want to make sure that thing is dialed in, implemented, it's working. You got the kinks, you know, kinks worked out before you take on anything else. Um, sometimes we've had things that we're implementing that took longer than a quarter, you know, because we have a whole team we're trying to implement it to. We have, you know, over 20 agents now on our team. So it, it's sometimes it's, it's a slower process of getting something implemented, right? And for us, like, you know, if we want to implement something, we're talking about that same thing over and over, like a broken record at every single weekly meeting. Um, like social media videos. That's one thing that we're really pushing, you know, our team to post content on social media. So every week we're holding them accountable to the social media. Um, and before you know it, guys, you, you're going to look back through the year. You're going you're gonna to say, okay, I got eight things or eight systems implemented into my business, which is, which is awesome, right? Like that's how you move your, your business forward. Um, and it compounds, right? Year over year, you're doing that, that kind of same process. Um, so let's open that up guys. I wanted to start with that, right? So as you learn stuff, you know, from these masterminds or different seminars you attend, you got to have a system where you go back and really figure out how you're going to implement this into your business. Um, so that's, that's a good strategy. Yeah. Just, just to kind of add into that, Enrique, I know one of, you know, one of the biggest mistakes that we made early on was to trying to do too much at once. So I think it's important to, you know, there's so many things that you know that your business may need, but definitely only picking two or three and go extremely, extremely deep on those two or three things. Uh, in the beginning, I know we, you know, we, we try to do maybe like eight things and it's, we weren't, we weren't going deep enough and we weren't able to implement them all. Um, and if you have a team, I think it's extremely important to make sure that, you know, yeah, we built the system. We just don't leave it and not check in to make sure that the team is using it. So it's, it, it's extremely important to make sure that we, we build it and then we implement it. And then we stay on top of either the processing team, your back end team, or your, your sales team to make sure they're using that system and they're all using it the same way. Right. So I definitely think it's important to do that. Yeah. Um, no, it's true. And, you know, a good exercise guys and a, a good way to kind of figure out what's what's the most important is, is just make a list of like uh, do, doing and done. Um, that's another way, right? A simple spreadsheet or something or a list that you carry with you. And you're gonna have a column where you wanna write all the things you wanna do, right? Like you're not gonna necessarily do them all but this is where all your ideas go in, right? Like you. You talk to another agent, they tell you about this cool thing they're doing. You're like, man, I want to do that. You know, you're not just going to go do it. You're going to put that on the list and then you're going to figure out if that makes the most sense to implement into your business today. Um, so you'll have the do column is where you're going to put, you know, a million ideas on the do column. And then what you're going to do is you're going to have the doing column. And that's where you're going to pick the one, the two, the three things that you're actually working on. Right. You shouldn't have more than, a, you know, the, the few things that you're working on at that time. And that's the ones you're actually doing right now. Um, and then once you implement those and once you knock those systems out, then you're going to move them to the done column. And, you know, agents are, are very like visual people, right? Like you see things happening, like you get motivated by that a lot of times if you're, if you're in sales. So just imagine you have this like living spreadsheet that you always keep with you and you work on and you slowly start to see things going into that done uh, column, right? Like my buyer presentation, it's, it's dialed in, it's, it's done, right? My listing presentation, it's done. You know, my, my ad, I hired my admin and I trained them and now they're up and running, that's done, you know? And you're gonna start to see that, right? And you're gonna, you know, you get that sense of motivation, that sense of accomplishment, and it's just gonna encourage you even more to keep following the process. So um, having like an organized chart or spreadsheet or something where you put everything on there and you can refer back to it is uh, I think it's, it's really helpful. Don't just carry those things in your mind, right? Like that's, <laughs> you're setting yourself out, setting yourself up for just being cloudy all the time. If you have a thousand ideas running through your head. Um, any questions guys on, on this idea or system or process, or maybe any feedback as to, you know, any struggles you're having with, 
implementing systems or what you should be implementing right now and stuff like that. Okay, let's let's move it forward. Um, so let's let's talk about. I just want to open it up to you guys. Um, has anybody done? Let's maybe get some feedback on open houses because I know we've we've done some open houses now. Um, maybe just some feedback on how your your open houses have gone. Anything you've learned, you know, from the open house right now, you know, being that California is just reopening and it's kind of new territory again. Um, has anybody done an open house in the, in the last you know, week or two? Jose, let's tell me about your open house, bro. What was your experience with your open house? Maybe what's some uh, feedback just from how your open house went? Um, yeah, so uh, house in Daly City that uh, came on the market uh, Thursday of this past week. So this weekend, this last weekend was the first open houses um, that I hosted. Uh, Saturday, we had some pretty good traction about... Um, I'd say about 30 people came through. So that was about, you know, 10 parties of people, about 30 that came through. Um, and so it was, it was pretty good traction Sunday. Uh, I think cause it, it was being, it was father's day. There's a little bit less people that came through. Um, and then I did a broker's tour uh, yesterday here in um, our association. Uh, Tuesdays is broker's tour. Um, I only had one person come by for that. Um, it, it seems as far as the open houses, I think people are still kind of um, maybe not used to, it, to the idea yet. So it didn't seem like it was this, uh, and I don't know, maybe I didn't promote it enough or, or anything, but it just, it didn't seem like it was um, like a big, um, you know, free for all, like people just clamoring to come in and look at the house. And it could be, you know, a number of things, you know, the, the location of the home, the price point and that kind of thing. So, um, you know, most everyone was wearing a mask. I wore a mask um, just because, you know, just to respect people and stuff like that. And I mean, I know that the mandate is if anyone's vaccinated, you don't have to wear a mask, but I still wore mine. Um, there was a couple of people that did come in that didn't have a mask on. Um, I had a little sign in. We have an iPad. We have people going and, and sign in on that. Um, but other than that, it, it, seemed, it, it seemed a little bit normal because then at one point there were multiple people in the home looking around and walking. So there was a little bit of normalcy there. So, um, and yeah, that's it. so far the only experience I've had with open houses. Um, I'm gonna do another one this coming weekend in Oakland. We have a, a new listing in Oakland. So uh, I don't know if being in a different market or if it'll make a difference, but um, yeah, I'll definitely see how that goes. Got it, got it. And what's uh, that, that property in Daly City, what's the, the price point? Uh, 1.198 okay um yeah. is that is that a pretty average price point for for daily city i don't know daily city extremely well but uh yeah i mean it's a it's a four bedroom four bedroom three and a half bath uh newer home yeah it's it's right in there with with everything else that's being uh listed i have seen some price reductions um in probably the last couple of weeks because i think some people when when the market, I mean, the, the market's still hot, but when it was really like getting 40 offers on homes, um, people were starting to list the homes at, you know, 1.29, 1.3 something, which was kind of what they were selling for. So now I'm seeing people kind of drop them down to even like, you know, 1.9, 1.99. Um, so I think we're, we're priced pretty good on it. Um, okay. So yeah. We'll but see. um, yeah, when, we'll what day did you list the property? I'm curious on what your strategy is on that. Do you list your property on a certain day of the week or? You know, we don't, I don't really have a, a strategy for it. It was mostly um, just the way things lined up as far as when the, the, the staging got put in place, when we had pictures and then when we got the pictures back. Yeah. So we had to, we had to move around. I mean, I, I wanted to do obviously at the, at the, more at the beginning of the week, um, but there was still some things to, Fin get done at finish at the house and then um the stager coming in so it was a little bit of um of that going on there got it so what what day what day did you end up listing it before the open house thursday so you listed on thursday and then open house saturday Sunday. saturday right got it okay 
Yeah, I mean, that, that it's obviously strategy. I mean, what has worked for us on that is listing earlier in the week, like on a Monday or Tuesday, and then door knocking um, the week of, you know, pro, you know, promoting the open house. And that's what we did this last time. We had our first open house, but we had the whole team go out and door knock. Like, it was like, I don't know, each person passed out 50 flyers and there was at least 10 or 15 agents door knocking. So it was cool because we have the manpower to go out there and, um, I think we listed the property early in the week, Monday or Tuesday, door knocked like on that Thursday or Friday, um, promoted the open house. And I think we had like 30, at least 30 people each day. So like, but this was also a house in East San Jose priced at like 800,000. Um, and I think we accepted an offer. We got nine offers the next week and we're in contract for like nine 30 or something like that. We no, priced it at seven ninety nine, um, but I think it's also yeah. I think it's important that we you have a strategy going in right, and and this is kind of what we talked about with our team is sometimes we're you know all the sellers want to get their homes on the market as like yesterday, but you're waiting on stagers, you're waiting on repairs, you're waiting on photos and all that stuff. But I think um, it is crucial to make sure you're listing the property and you're having enough time to expose it to the market if you're doing any sort of pre-marketing or, or cold calling or door knocking beforehand to promote it, making sure you have enough time. Um, and then uh, setting that offer due date as well as, you know, has been really effective for us. And also remember the majority of people find out about the open house through online, right? Like through Zillow or Redfin or anything. So um, having it on the market, I think a little bit earlier in the week gives enough people, gives people enough time to see it and to know that, all right, this weekend, the open house is coming. Um, especially as more properties come on the market, because the inventory is starting to go up a little bit. I don't know if you guys are noticing that. Um, but it's, I think now that California is, is reopening, more people are going to feel more confident to kind of make their moves as well. So I think that's going to affect the market as well. Um, anybody else? Um, open house do open houses this past week um one of the things also that we're going to try out is just instead of doing like flyers or anything like that um we're, we're going to do a qr code that people could scan so we're going to try that this weekend um it makes it easier you know with not having to get flyers printed but then i just don't know how people feel about like giving a flyer to someone especially with covid are people grabbing the flyers are people kind of some iffy you know, or not, did you, did you have any sort of flyers or anything, Jose, at your thing? And were people taking them? Uh, yeah, we have flyers there. And um, yeah, some people were taking them. I just had them there out for everyone and they would, whoever wanted them would, would grab them. But it yeah. wasn't every person that grabbed them though. Whereas, yeah. you know, in, in the past, you'd you know, have an open house and everyone took a flyer. This yeah. time it was probably, you know, out of 10 people, maybe like three, maybe took the flyer. Got it. Um, yeah, so uh, Canva, we use Canva to do a lot of our marketing material. Um, and on Canva, you can make a QR code. It's, a, it's, it's, it's part of the, the service. You can get Canva for free and you can do a lot with the free version. Uh, if, you upgrade, if you upgrade to like the pro version, it's only like 120 bucks or something for the whole year. Um, it allows you to do a lot more stuff, but the QR codes are in there. So like if you have a property website, um, you can create a QR code with that property website. So what we did is we just basically created that QR code. We made like a one page thing, you know, with branded with our logo and the property address. And then we're going to like frame it and we're going to have it there so people can just scan it. Cause right now when you go to restaurants, right? Like we're used to now scanning the menu, right? With our, with our phone. Um, so it's kind of, it's kind of becoming normal. So we're going to try that and basically it'll direct them to our property website. And, and then will you guys also have flyers there or is it going to be one win or the other? Um, we're not going to do flyers this time around. Well, I mean, we're going to try it out and see what happens. Um, just cause I, what's happening is we're trying to hurry up and get these properties ready. Um, and then by the time we get the photos, we got to get the flyers made, send them out to the printer. And then everyone seems like everyone's backed up right now. Like our stagers are backed up photographers are backed up even the guys putting out our op our uh, our for sale signs we use opticom they're like a week and a half or two weeks out right now yeah. um so we're like if we don't have to make flyers and we can just print this in our office 
you know, it just saves us time um, by not having to wait for the flyers. So we're just going to do the QR code. We're going to have like an iPad where people could sign in too, so we can capture their info. Um, but we're going to try it without the flyers. Any other questions, guys, about open houses yeah. right now or ideas? Yeah, no, no. Uh, Jose, what about the, the people that signed in? Did you guys, did you have like a strategy to reach out to them? Um, you know, on, you know, that weekend or that Monday, did you reach out to those the people that signed into your open house? Yeah, we have an email that we send out. Um, uh, just to, we capture mostly anyone that didn't have an agent um, on there because that the, the sign in sheet asks, are you an agent? Do you have an agent and that kind of thing? So those people, yeah, we reach out to them. Uh, one of them, uh, a buyer had no agent, wanted the disclosures, so we sent them that over. Um, but yeah, out of the whole weekend, we probably had three people that actually um, didn't have agents and, and were able to capture their information. I don't know. Okay, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I know for our team, we were able to, with the door knocking, we were able to pick up a, a listing from it. Um, and then also we have, we also had another listing appointment that looks good that we may be able to sign up from, from the door knocking. And we had, you know, like Enrique said, we probably had about 60 people sign in. And even if they have agents, you know, we, we are, um, you know, just letting them know what, what benefits that we can provide. You know, we're not, we're not going after them, but we're just letting them know, Hey, look, there are other options. So again, you know, it's, it's definitely, uh, an opportunity for, for yourself and your team to definitely reach out to, to these, these buyers. Um, another thing that they're doing is they're actually reaching out to the people that went to the open house that evening. So we're instructing our team to make that open house, not just only from, you know, 11 to five, but to expect to spend another hour after that to reach out to those potential people that may have questions about that particular property. So instead of waiting until Monday, that's a strategy that we're using is having our agents, hey, look, book an extra hour for yourself to reach out to some of these potential buyers that may have questions. Yeah, I think that's important too, because um, as open houses become, you know, more of the norm right now, think about it. If you're a, if you're a buyer, you go to a property um, and you're, if you're looking at homes, you're probably going to go look at something else, right? You're probably going to go look at this one, that one, you probably got a few that you're going to look at if you're a serious buyer. So it's like, it's the, the agent that is like on it and is like all over that buyer and calling them and in touch with them, like as soon as possible, I think it has the best opportunity to win. Um, so I, I think um, we should definitely be contacting the clients like right after the open house. Um, we even, we even were talking about like make like a video instead of just doing like a text message or an email, send them a video. Um, you know, you can just record a quick little video at the property. Hey, it's Enrique. I just met you at this property and they see the property in the background. So now they remember your face. Um, because right, like all agents sound the same, right? If you're getting text messages from agents, it's like, Oh, who are you? You're from Intero. You're from compass. You're from wherever, right? Like to the consumer, you're just another agent, right? But if they remember your face, you know, or they remember your voice or your personality or that property that they see in the background, it's just going to be a lot more effective. So um, I think we should uh, definitely make that part of our strategy so that we can convert more of these, these clients. Um, and then the other thing too, is just the chances of that buyer liking that property, it's slim, you know? like it's either a hit or miss, right? They're gonna walk in, they're gonna see it. Immediately, they're gonna you know, know if they would like that property or not, right? Like within those 10 seconds or just kind of seeing the layout real quick, they got a certain criteria in their mind that they're looking for. So the chances are slim, right? So we gotta already like go into it knowing that they may not like this property. So have like other options already for them. Just kind of like when you go to the shoe store, you know, you go ask for a shoe, if they don't have your shoe or your size, like they bring you out three more shoes, right? Um, you know, they bring you a, a bigger size and tell you to put one of those insoles. You know, yeah, you'll fit into this one, right? <laughs> like, they're trying to make a sale, right? So I think we got to have that kind of, uh, uh, we're not shoe salesmen, but we got to have that same mentality of giving people options. You know, hey, like, hey, if you don't like this one, did you see this other one that just popped up down the street? You know, I know the listing agent or there's a coming soon down the street. You know, I may be able to get you into that one before it hits the market. 
And now I think now you're standing out, you know, you're of the, of the crowd, you're making yourself look different from the other agents. And then you do the video and then you do the text and then you're, you're, you have that great personality. It's like all those things combined is I think what's going to uh, give value to, to these people. Any questions, comments, or feedback regarding kind of the open house right now? Yeah, I mean, just, just one, one, one thing I wanted to add. I mean, one thing that I kind of tell my team is, you know, this is your, this is your opportunity to perform, right? P to perform for potential buyers that are coming in and then also perform for uh, neighbors that are going to be coming in. Right. So it's important to make sure that, you know, you're well prepared, you have a good presentation. And so that if a potential, if a potential neighbor comes in that, you know, that could be a potential listing or listing appointment. So, you know, it's just going in there with that mindset of, Hey, I'm not just here to open doors. I'm not just here to sell this property. I am here to actually, you know, perform for potential buyers, potential neighbors and get, get, have an opportunity to to get interviewed for another position whether again you're going to be the buyer's agent or or a listing agent so just you know again i, I you know I, I i mean if you guys have gone to open houses you've gone and people are just hey pick up a flyer they're, they're not really they're not really performing they're just there because they feel like they have to be there and again i think for me open house leads are huge because these are clients that have you know put on their clothes put on their makeup comb their hair and took their car and they drove to that property. So these are boots on the ground, people that are, you know, seriously looking to purchase a property. So I think it's, you know, not to waste that opportunity as sales agents is make sure that we go into that mindset of, hey, you know what, I'm here, I'm, I'm going to try and get me an opportunity because I just spent this Saturday. And, and again, you know, we, we can spend Saturdays with our family or go over here and perform and try to get, get some opportunity. So it's, for me, I just kind of Try to train my team to have that mindset of, of get ready to perform this weekend. Yeah, definitely. Pedro, do you have something, bro? I just had a question regarding the uh, the options, right? Like, would you do that after the open house via email or in a conversation, or would you do that in that home? Um, you're saying like talking to the client, or where? where yeah, let's say, for example, it doesn't fit their criteria. Let's say, like, you'd realize, like, right, this is not the home for them. Would you mention, like, the other homes, like, in, while you're sitting in that open house, or would you do that doing, like, a follow-up? Uh, I think it depends on how busy it is, right? If you're, if it's super busy and, like, you got a bunch of people to attend to, you may not be able to do it, but I would mention it, and I would say, hey, what I can do is I'll be done here at four. I'll go ahead and give you a call, and, and I, I know of a few other properties if this one doesn't fit your needs. Um, I think part of being a good agent is not not only knowing the home you're selling, but knowing what's going on around the area, right? So I would already like, if I have my laptop, I would already, and you have like maybe a website where you can, um, people can view properties or you have the MLS. I would pull up all the active listings. I would pull up the comps that are just sold. You know, I would pull up, I would have stuff already like set up on my tabs so that I can easily say, hey, look, there's these two other ones. I know this agent. I know they're going to drop the price or, hey, this property actually has a bigger backyard if that's what you're looking for. You know, so it's just once the buyer sees like, oh, man, like Pedro knows his stuff, you know, it's, it's, he's not only selling this home, but he's the guy that's going to, you know, basically get me into the best deal for me or the best home for me. So um, you're going to have to kind of play it by ear. If you can make the conversation happen there, if you're not that busy, then yeah, make it happen there or plant the seed and let them know you're going to be calling them back, you know, after you're done with this open house. Thank you. No problem. Um, questions, guys, anything else around open houses? Okay, cool. Let's, uh, let's move forward guys. What, um, what else is going on? Like what's, let's talk about your business. Maybe what's, what's something you're working on right now? What's something that's working really well for you? What's something you want to work on? Maybe what's a system you want to implement a question you have, um, you know, feel free to be vulnerable, put yourself out there and let's, let's see what we can, uh, come up with. I have a question. Emmanuel, what's up, buddy? 
Um, has, does, has anyone ever implemented a virtual assistant within their business here? And was it, and what were, what were you having them do? Was it prospecting? Was it more admin stuff or and how was your experience there? I think Anita, you, you said that you had, you had some experience with that. I do. I actually have, um, a virtual assistant. My current assistant just got licensed. So now she's selling real estate. Nice. And I actually like it a, a lot better. She's on the East Coast, but she's super responsive. She's just one of those, I think I got really lucky because she's just one of those girls that's always on her phone um, or laptop. So she responds to every email within like at the very latest 15 minutes. Um, but she does all of my admin stuff. Um, I mean, from the simplest thing to ordering a for sale sign post to taking it down, um, I have her working on all of my monthly content now that we're doing, um, uh, dropping off flyers and stuff now, especially for new listings. I have her create all those flyers. She sends them over to our print company, um, coordinates the print company to actually drop them off at my house, which my original assistant didn't do. She would just kind of pick them up. But since she's virtual, she has to be creative. Um, she coordinates, gosh, everything. I even have her... Um, starting to do a little bit of MLS stuff. So I wasn't really confident because she's not a, a licensed agent or, you know, she just, but she's really eager to learn. So um, she wanted to learn how to work the MLS. So I have her now putting in all the data for listings, um, you know, changing the status from pending, sold, et cetera. Um, and then I started recently including her on the transaction email. So now she's, um, you know, if I'm out and I couldn't, you know, this morning I couldn't get to uh, remove contingencies on time and she already saw the DocuSign come through late last night from my buyer. So she went ahead and um, forwarded over to the listing agent and removed contingencies for me, no problem. And I woke up and I was like, oh, that's so awesome. But she, uh, because we had the conversation on Monday, this is what's going to happen this week. She already knew I was going to do that. So um, yeah, it's, it's really good. If you find the right one, you're, it's good. Have you had her prospect before or have had any of your uh, virtual assistants prospect? So that's a really good question. I hired her on that note. So I hired her to um, pick up the phone calls that come in from my leads. Um, and she's, she was doing good, but I was desperate for an assistant since my assistant just got licensed and she wanted to sell real estate. Um, so I kind of shifted that away and now I'm working with a different stat strategy and converting those leads to my actual licensed agents and okay. I just have her do assistant stuff the thing is is if if I did do that for her I think I would be spreading her too thin and she she would she wouldn't be as good yeah, as doing her. prospecting and doing the admin stuff yeah it yeah. seems like a lot for one person to do right how much were you paying her um she's really inexpensive um I don't even know. She just sends me the invoice every month and it's like 500 bucks. It's not, it's not expensive oh, nice. at all. Okay. And, it, and she charges me, actually she charges me by the hour, but I felt so bad. I said, Hey, just consistently, you know, $200 a month and then add on whatever you charge me per month. So nice. I might give her a bonus cause she's doing so good. So just want to keep her. Yeah, cause I'm kind of, I'm kind of toying with the fact of maybe like expanding, like I prospect on my own, but maybe adding another layer of prospecting, like more so like cold calling and hiring maybe a virtual assistant out of, out of the country or maybe in the country that can not really directly cold call for um, uh, maybe like hot leads, but more so for like brand marketing, you know, like more, more so like campaigning, similar to like what politicians do to kind of just let them know that we're around and if they want to do any consultations and things like that, um, feel free to let us know because I think the market is really hot with uh, with sellers. And I, I got this idea because, you know, when we went door knocking for, for the open house, people were really willing to talk to us, you know, and they wanted to know about their home home value and uh, wanted to know uh, how the market is going. So I think it would be a good strategy to kind of implement kind of like the political campaigning with just letting people know that we're here for free consultations if they need to, um, and also like create some brand awareness as well. But um, yeah, I was curious to know like how, trying to figure out how I could train them. Um, I would assume it'd be similar to uh, how we do script training and also like where to find these people as well. And of course, find someone that's comfortable with doing that for uh, like at least like an hour or two hours a day. 
work and how much that would cost and things like that. So just toying with it, but yeah. Thanks yeah, for I hear a lot of overseas um, people or a lot of people using people from overseas to make those phone calls. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of like you said, like a strategy maybe a politician would use, but I yeah. have to explore and I don't know if that would, yeah, I don't, you'd have to. It's very that. traditional in a way, but I feel like, I feel like a lot of the traditional ways of like real estate are coming back because, you know, people haven't seen or talk, talk to people in a while, you know? So they're really, really open to talking to people right now, right? And that just comes from my experience with door knocking. Like every single time, like no doors were slammed in my face. Whereas like two years ago, people would be pissed off, right? Um, just as long as you come with a good attitude and try to make them laugh, they, like they wanted to talk to us or talk to me, right? Um, and they were just really curious because right now we're in a, a market that's shifting that people haven't seen before. And it's kind of like, inside it exciting especially to homeowners because they're like oh my gosh like the housing prices are benefiting me right for buyers it's like like kind of scary so you kind of have to walk them through the fact that there are some benefits right now but for sellers it's like the perfect time right it's kind of what they've been waiting for if they have been ever thinking of moving so why not kind of just get right in front of them and say you know we have options for you we can talk about this if you want to right so so, so i on, think on that, that note Sorry to interrupt. On that note, no, um, with your door knocking, so I haven't door knocked in years. And um, what what's the conversation when you knock on somebody's door? What's the conversation and how do? I, you yeah, I think I think when before we, I mean, we had a reason to in, invite them to our open house, so that was kind of that that just relieved me of all pressure, right? Because I had a reason, right, to, to kind of talk to them, and mm -hmm. I think that that's important when you before you go into any call. Uh, before you talk to someone in person is kind of have an intention or already have in mind what value you're going to bring to them right mm -hmm. um, and then the, the way I you know knocked on the door it was more uh, excited right um, mm -hmm. when I prospect I try to be like excitable and I was like hey just wanted to invite you to our open house it's going to be a party we have water we have madelines and more water right so they were laughing because I was like kind of just you know making fun of it Mm -hmm. um, and most of them were like, uh, it's kind of, you know, different demographic where we were door knocking. So they're like, where's the Patron, you know, like, is there gonna be any Patron? like, where's that Palatero, you know, so we were kind of having like that kind of kind of conversation. Um, but I think it really came down to like our mindset and the fact that we were okay talking to these people because we had something to invite them to, right? And then be excited to what we were inviting them to, uh, mm -hmm. the open house and saying, you know, it's gonna be a party with water, right? <laughs> come check out the house and things like that yeah and then um one thing that you know i kind of implemented myself is we we're partnered with uh or we have homebot io so after i invited them to the open house and asked them if they had thought of selling or um had any friends i wanted to move in the area i have the homebot io app which is basically it's it's a new um tool a real estate tool where they show you a lot of data um it shows you what your home's value is and it's pretty accurate from what I've been seeing. Uh, it shows you how much money you can save if you refinance with a 15 year, 30 year uh, uh, refinance. Um, they show you, you know, other options you can do with the equity that you have within your home and also what you can rent out your house for, right? So I had, I already had in my mind like different points that I could hit them with and then ultimately, you know, try to get their contact information. I think that day I got like four buyer contacts. I got a listing appointment. We went on the listing appointment on Tuesday. It went pretty well. Uh, surprisingly, it was my mom's friend. So they real they recognized my last name. So, um, and then I think we got one listing out of it that's signed already. So nice. people are excited. So I think that's kind of the drive to get away from being scared of door knocking and things like that. So um, that's why I'm planning to door knock more and maybe do that like the virtual assistant type of thing. Cause I think people are excited to talk to people now and learn more. That's awesome, bro. Uh, to piggyback off that, the door knocking, um, I did a mastermind with uh, Kevion. He's down South and he, that he built his business off door knocking um, and they still door knock heavy and he's selling like over, I don't know, 200 million a year or something. Yeah. Um, and they're, do they're door knocking like high end areas. They're door knocking mm -hmm. like $5 million properties, $10 million properties. Um, but basically one, the, the biggest thing he told me is that anytime you door knock, you always want to leverage a piece of information. So you want to leverage like the newest property listed or the highest sold comp in that neighborhood. Um, and basically that's, that's the whole premise, right? Or if you're inviting them to your open house, you want to leverage something. Um, just simply coming up to someone saying like, Hey, the market's hot. Do you want to sell? 
um, you're going to get a lot more uh, rejection that way. Um, but when you're like giving someone information like, hey, I just stopping by to let you know, you know, about the, the home that just sold down the street. I'm not sure if you saw it, even if it's not your listing. Um, no one knows if it's your listing or not. Right. Um, so just telling you about this home down the street. And then it usually just gets the conversation started. And then you're going to have to, you know, kind of just see how the client's reacting from there and, and, and you know, be able to maneuver through that. But um, that's what they do. Like they, they door knock every single day and they, they pull listings like all day, like luxury listings, high end stuff, beachfront properties. Yeah. It's all built off door knocking. So always leverage, like you're saying, like you leverage the open house, you leverage the new listing that we got. People want to know what's going on in their neighborhood. Right. So just make sure you always leverage something, something exciting that you can tell them. Yeah. And I think that you said exciting, right? So I think it's always important when you meet people or you're cold prospecting, always be excited, right? Always be happy. Even though you're having a bad day, like try to be as happy and excitable as possible because that, that'll get them excited. Right. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, I mean, you can tell someone, Hey, you know, the home just sold down the street. And if you don't sound excited about it, they're not going to be excited. Right. So yeah. I think there, like you said, there's two parts to that equation. It's leveraging the information so that you can share with them and then bringing the vibe and the energy and that attitude to that client um, to kind of put them at ease. Right. Mm -hmm. So like you immediately want to figure out a way to make them laugh or something, mm -hmm. or maybe you see something at their doorstep or maybe you see a Niners or a Raiders something or a flag or whatever, pick something that you can now like spark up a conversation about because really that's what it's all about. Right. It's all about relationships, right? Like if someone's going to sell, they're going to sell, but why are they going to go with you? They're going to go with you because they can relate to you. They like you, or you guys hit it off. Um, so you, you definitely want to make sure you bring the energy and you want to find something to talk about other than just real estate, right. Yeah. Or be able to kind of pivot, pivot to that. I agree. Good stuff, bro. And then the, the virtual assistant, I mean, yeah, if you don't have an assistant, you know, or some sort of admin support, you know, that's really going to be the key to, to unlocking your production, right? Like, yeah, I think for, cause we have our own admins a part of the team. So I'm not really looking for someone to do the admin stuff. It's more so for prospecting and like gain that extra reach from what I'm doing right now, because I can't do it all, all the time. Right. So I just want to be able to get that reach, but I don't, I, I don't know if it, it'll be worth it at this point. But, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to figure that out. Yeah. You know, like anything it's, it's effective, right? There's teams that run, you know, that generate a ton of business just off of, uh, you know, ISAs, inside sales agents, or, you know, people who are calling for them, but it's, it's just a matter of consistency, right? So um, if, if you hire someone or you outsource something, as long as they're doing it consistently and they're, they're putting in the reps, I mean, over time, you're going to build a return on investment with that. Um, you know, so the sales, but the salesperson should be a different person from the admin the administrative support. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's a big thing. Like that some of my mentors, you know, kind of preach is you don't want to hire an admin who wants to become an agent. Like that can all, that can be a big mistake because what's going to happen is you're going to spend time training them. You're going to spend time getting your systems up and running. And then, you know, in the back of your mind, they want to get their license and become a, you know, an agent, they're going to end up bouncing. Right. And then now you got to start all over again you're going to take a few steps back. So it's, it's, uh, as you start to build out your team, you want to make sure that you're hiring the right person for the right seat. Right. Yeah. So an admin, like you should hire someone who has just admin experience, customer service experience, people who love just being an assistant, not who necessarily want to be like the person making the sales. Um, and a good question, a good way to figure that out is like, you know, when you're hiring an assistant, it's like, hey, what's uh, what's your future with real estate? Like, what do you see in the next three to five years? Where do you want to be with real estate? If they say, I want to be licensed and I want to sell homes, <laughs> immediately you're, you're done, right? If they say, no, I want to help build an organization. I want to be your right-hand woman or your right-hand man. I want to manage the whole office. You know, I want to help you know, do that stuff. I want to make sure we have the best customer service, like those type of that type of lingo, right? I want to implement systems into your business and help it run efficiently. Like those are the type of people you should be looking for. 
Um, but the ones who want to be an, an agent, you're going to, you're going to waste a lot of time like that. Yeah. That happened to me. My first gig into real estate, I was hired as an admin or like in as an ISA slash admin, like firsthand experience. The, my main goal was to get my license. And that was my boss's goal was to help me get my license. But right when I got my license, I dipped from the team because I realized after working for him for so long, it wasn't what I wanted, you know? So I agree with that 100%. Yeah, because sometimes think about it. Some agents want to hire an admin who says they want to be an agent because they think, all right, I'll hire them as an admin. I'll get some use out of them. And then when they become an agent, I'll have them on my team and, you know, it's going to pay for itself. They're going to close some deals and this and that, right? Like, it's like, no, if you want a rock star admin, you need to pay. You need to pay people, right? Yeah. Um, you need to make sure that they feel like they're being compensated. You need to have, you know, bonuses in place. Like, it, you need to treat it like a high level. If you want someone to stick with you long term, um, you know, a, a good admin can, you know, double, help you double or triple your business, you know, and, um, and someone who's like self-sufficient, all that stuff, it's less, it's less management that you have to do versus if you're hiring like a super low level person, someone who, you know, yeah, I want to learn about real estate, you know, and you're having to teach them everything and hold their hand and they're making a bunch of mistakes because they're just, you know, a low on a lower level, it, you know, maybe you're paying them less, but it's going to cost you more in the long run. Right. So, uh, it's better to invest into someone because it'll definitely help you, uh, you know, take your business to the next level and it'll make your life a lot less stressful, uh, and take a bunch of stuff off of your plate. Any questions, guys, any other questions around, uh, admin support, hiring, anything like that, or any other, any other topics you guys have anything you want to learn about right now in your business? Like for, for an admin, um, like what's it, like in this area, someone that's local, that's not virtual, um, like what's a good entry level pay? Like for someone that is, that is of good quality, right? Like, is it like $20 an hour or like what's a good? Um, I know for ours, like we have a couple, we have two admins on staff. Um, and then we're, we're, we're somewhere in like in the 25 to $35 range. Um, and plus bonuses. Yeah. Plus, you know, bonuses, mileage, you know, cause our admins are driving everywhere, right? We have, you know, listings all over the place and they're going out there, they're meeting the stager, they're doing all that stuff. Um, so reimbursing them on mileage and then also giving them bonuses. Um, the thing with bonuses is you want to reward people for stuff that you want to happen, right? You don't want to reward people just for deals closing because deals are going to close. You want to reward an admin for doing like exceptional service, right? For generating that five-star review or things of that sort. Um, and I think that's, you want to incentivize people to do the things that you want to happen. Um, you know, and, and, and before, like the way we thought was like, Hey, just every deal you close, I'm going to pay you a bonus. Right. But it's like, no, those deals were going to close already. Right. But what type of quality was that transaction going to be? Right. What was the customer you know, experience? You know, so um, you, you want to reward based off of that is, is what I would recommend. Jose, you had a question, bro. Yeah. Um, we currently um, have uh, two people that we, uh, they're not licensed, but they want to work with us and become licensed and be part of our team. So we're kind of taking them on as like interns, right? And so I guess mainly we've been doing some of the things you've been saying, like showing them, hey, this is how you, you know, prep for an open house, or this is how you do like certain things to kind of try to get them to know, you know, what it's like to be like an agent once they become licensed. Um, so I guess the, the question is, is that, I mean, should we be do, doing that with them? I mean, we're, we're not really, we're kind of giving them some admin stuff as, for example, like, can you create this flyer for us or like small kind of uh, things like that. So um, I guess we're, I don't know if we're not getting the, the true usage or out of them that we should be, or, um, you know, they're kind of just there, and, you know, helping here and there, but we don't really have, you know, I don't know if we're, if we should give them, like you were saying, more admin stuff because they want to, they want to be agents. They don't want to be an admin person. You know? Yeah. That's a good question, man. And I, I could just tell you like the way we run our stuff and 
before that, I think what you have to identify, number one, is do they have the personality to be an agent, right? Um, because even though someone says they want to be an agent, doesn't mean that they have what it takes to be an agent. So I think you got to start there. Um, do they have any sales background? Have they ever been in a, in, a, in, a, in a spot where they had to sell themselves, where they had the cold call, where they've had the door knock, where they've had to sell something? Um, those are things that I look for. Um, have they had any um, track record, right? Uh, you know, success in other areas. You know, um, like one of the guys on our team that's, that's one of the top sales guys on our team, he was a competitive tennis player, right, Mitch. You know, so he, you know, he went to, he got a scholarship, all kinds of stuff. So he knows what it takes to grind. He knows what it takes to hustle. He knows what it takes to wake up early and all that stuff. Um, so you're looking for more of like the, the personality traits and all that first. I think you got to start there. Um, if it's just someone that says, oh, I love homes. I love architecture. I love, you know, seeing nice homes. Yeah, that's part of what we do, but that's not really the foundation of what we do. Foundation of what we do is sales, right? Like, how are you going to convince someone to work with you? How are you going to show them value, your value proposition? Why are they going to go with you over the other agents? So you want to first make sure that they fit that kind of personality type. So I would start there first, right? So the, the two agents, you two prospects you have, do an assessment, an honest assessment. Like, is this person a go-getter? Like if I tell this person to make a hundred calls, are they going to make a hundred calls and like stick it through and, and, you know, figure that out? What's their natural ability, right? What's right. their background? Where have they been successful in other areas? Um, and if they pass and keep them on, right? And then the next step is you're going to want to train them to do the most important part of the business, which is generate sales. So like, our, we have we hire ISAs, like an entry-level position, inside sales agent for people who aren't licensed and are in the process of getting licensed. And all they do is hit the phones all day. That's all they do. So their job while they're getting licensed is to learn the scripts, learn how to use our CRM, learn how to use our dialer, learn how to you know, identify which leads are good, learn how to qualify leads, learn how to make those calls, tracking how many contacts they made per day, and basically book appointments. Um, one of the guys on our team, Manny, he's in the process of getting his license. He booked seven appointments last week, All right? And that's what he does every day. I'm training him to be a sales ninja, that's it. Because once he learns that and then he gets his license, well now like that's like the majority of what you gotta do. The contract, the open house, all that stuff. Like I could, we could teach you that, you know, easily, right? That's all like a lot of just textbook stuff. Um, but you can't teach someone how to hustle. You know, they have to have that. So I would do that, bro. Like if I have two, you know, prospects, I would have them hitting the phones every day. You know, if you guys are door knockers, I would have them door knocking every day. I would have them calling all your leads, all your database, everything you got, and basically trying to book as many appointments for you as possible. If you're, if you're the closer um, and slowly graduate them, once they get their license, then you show them how to be a closer you show them the next steps of that process. And then um, as far as admin, I would just hire an admin that you're going to pay hourly or salary. And that's their sole job, right? And you need to be very clear on like, these are the 50 things that you're going to be doing for me, right? And write them all down and train them and have some sort of manual, you know, so that if they stick with you, um, great. If they leave, it's already documented and written down so that the next person that comes in, you know, it's, they're not having to learn it all over again. You have yeah, it all. Plugging in. Yep. Nice. Um, thanks. Yeah, man. So it's, I mean, these are things we've learned over time, right? Cause we've, we've made bad hires and we, you go into it and here's the thing. And, and, and we'll leave off with this cause we're coming on time is a lot of times we go into it uh, looking at potential, right? Um, you know, like, oh man, this guy could be good. If only I he did this and that and he cut his hair and he dressed different and I'll train him on that and blah, 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 right? Like he could be a rock star. But what you end up finding out is that you can't change someone, right? Like we don't, their personality is their personality. It's really hard to change somebody, right? So instead of looking at potential, you have to look at patterns, right? Put them to the test. Um, put these guys on a, a 30 day probation or a 90 day probation Hey, you got to show up four or five days a week. You got to make X amount of calls. You got to do this. 
and make it really clear black and white of what they have to do. And what's going to happen is they're either going to do it or they're going to quit. And that's what we do. We put everyone through a 90 day trial and, and they either, you know, sink or swim. Um, and it filters them out. And the great thing is we don't really have to fire people. They usually fire themselves if it's not working out. And, and Jose, Pedro, we have like, we have Herbert on here right now. He can, he can tell you that he went through that process. And when Herbin, you know, Herbin got on there, he was, he was really nervous. He was messing up those scripts. <laughs> but now he's, you know, he kills it. He kills it on there, right? So it's just, you know, and, and again, we've had other people where we put them through that process and they come to us in three weeks, like, you know what, Jason, this isn't for me. And it's like, no problem. You know what? It, it's, you know, at least we found out within three weeks, we didn't find out, you know, eight months down the line when we spent all this time and energy with them. So again, I think, you know, we call it like that, like a 90 day boot camp, and it is, you know, the grind of real estate. And again, once they go through that, you know, they're, they're happy that they went through it. They understand that they can just pick up a phone and prospect or they're, they're comfortable at a family barbecue having, you know, a script with, you know, with their cousin, their aunt, their brother, whoever talking about, you know, the LP mama, and the DIC of, of real estate. And so, you know, there, there it's, it's, it's definitely, you're, you're benefiting the agent by mentoring them that way, right? Because then again, you're actually, if they don't stay with you, at least they live, they leave your, your office with, with that high level skill. Yeah. Yeah. Hervin, how's it been, bro? <laughs> you know, what a time to be alive. <laughs> No, it's been great. Yeah. I mean, uh, I've always done sales face to face. The phones were completely different to me. Right. So it's definitely a great skill set that I have now. It's a little bit more like natural and that could, um, yeah, it's just, it's just natural now. So it's, uh, definitely, uh, <clears throat> it's definitely a, a much funner process to, to prospect now. And, uh, and it's true. The people that, the people that are, um, that it's for them, they'll just stick around and the people that, you know, that's not for them. They'll they'll just let you know, you know. So you don't. They'll bring the conversation to you pretty much. <laughs> yeah, 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 guys. Um, yeah, it's 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 it, that was a mindset um, transition for us too. Because in the beginning, like when we're trying to build our team, anybody who had a, a pulse or or said like they wanted to join our team, oh, yeah, yeah, come in. You're hired, dude. Like, let's make this happen, right? And we were just hiring anybody, and we wasted a lot of time a lot of time, a lot of energy, frustration. And it was, it really fell back on us. Like they should have never made the cut or we should have been more stringent and had like certain parameters before we bring anyone. And even if they meet all the parameters, it still doesn't guarantee that they're gonna succeed, but it definitely gives you the best opportunity for them to succeed. Uh, the chances of them succeeding are definitely a lot higher. And um, now like, what happens is once everyone, like as you build a team and it gets bigger and everyone kind of knows the culture and knows like what, what's expected, they start bringing other people in who would want to be part of this, right? So like Hervin, he's like, hey, I got a boy. He's looking to, you know, maybe make a move, join a team. Can I bring him in? And I'm like, well, you already know what we expect, right? Like, is he going to be able to stick this out? Is he going to be able to hit the phones all day? Is he going to be able to show up? You know, and he's like, yeah, he's, uh, you know, he, he would be good. So, all right, bring him in. Cause he already, Herman already knows what's expected, you know? So um, your team starts building itself, you know, at that point, you know, once you kind of really create that, that solid uh, foundation, that vision, and you have really clear cut parameters on what's expected. Uh, it starts, it starts building itself. You start attracting people. Any questions guys, and then we'll, we'll wrap up. We're, we're on time now. We're good. So um, guys, thank you for coming out. Uh, Real Estate Growth Academy session eight, I believe. Uh, we're going to continue this for, you know, for the 12 weeks, uh, 12 weeks through. Um, whatever you've learned today, guys, go back and apply it towards your business. If you have any questions offline, I'm more than uh, willing to help you guys out. Uh, like I said, make sure you pay it forward. Uh, make sure you don't bite off more than you can chew. Pick the one or two things that really resonate with you. And, you know, stick with those for at least a quarter and, you know, make sure you're going deep, not wide. I think that's probably a, a big takeaway. Um, and yeah, I'll see you guys next week. Same time, same place. So have a great week, guys. Bye, right, guys.
Later.